Throat Gang, we are joined by Lone Star Larry himself. Yeehaw! And myself, the nominee Nostradamus, <laughs> James Harris. Welcome to the weekly running of the boys with today's full episode only available on patreon.com slash throwing fits. Before we get into horrendous Oscar fits, <laughs> the most popular normie shoes, and nearly getting <laughs> dragged to death, yeah. metaphorically. Um, I, I wasn't almost hate crimed in Texas, to be clear. Really? No, I wasn't. No, I okay. wasn't almost dragged to... I was making a Oh, like behind like a pickup truck. Yeah. Street, stream till. Huh? This is already Emmett. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what? What are um, you saying? That's okay. What See, like this is what happens when you try to drive. Let's get into, before we get into all that, let's get into a project that has been in the works for oh. us since August 2022. Yeah. When I showed up at this <laughs> little office in the garment district, um, I had two cans of Diet Coke because the guy... There's like a card minimum, remember? Or like maybe we like three showed or four. Up. You said no, I... no, no. We showed up separately. Oh, okay. So anyway, continue. Um, this has been eight months in the making. Approximately four thousand emails out of control. Um, but that's how you know that they they care. Yeah, and they work six days a week, <laughs> uh, which is legal in their country, I believe. Uh, this coming in two Thursdays. Yeah, March twenty third. This is like the preview to the preview, just because we're so right. excited. But. Throwing fits, cut and sew is officially launching on wow. March twenty third. They they said we couldn't do it. I know. They said we could only collab. We, they was almost right. We have designed the perfect overshirt. We can like leave it at that. I know. Uh, just a quick glimpse for yeah the me. best friends behind the ten dollar paywall that are watching this video or watching it three weeks from now. I'm gonna wear it like this. When we really? Yeah. Okay. We'll get into like all the details, um, the references that we used. The, you know, the custom fucking dyed yarns, all that stuff in the... The Dobbies. We'll be ne that'll be next week, but you, you and I have basically been pounding away creatively to launch Cut and Sew, and the decision was, let's do a three-season overshirt. Yeah. As the, as the, um, as the maiden voyage. Mm -hmm. um, we got them sitting in a fulfillment center, ready to go in Jersey. That's just right, no pre-order. Wrapping up a few details. Um, Here, let me... Shout out to everyone. Shout out to Barati, my homie. Well, again, I exchanged 4,000 emails with. I kind of want to like go visit them and just be like, hey, man, you guys want some free flow? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it feels like the amount of like love and care and just professionalism that these motherfuckers put into this, like, because they don't know who we are. Like, we have an right. agent that we work with, but like, they're just kind of, well, I guess they're getting paid, but it's like kind of a shot in the dark in terms of, oh, should we say the other brands this factory works with? No, like, we, quality, we can't. We, we, oh, we I can't? don't think we're allowed to, but like, and again, I mean, this is what we're going to get into next week when okay, we get sorry, like sorry. fully, I'm fully get, into I'm it. getting ahead of myself. Just a little tease yeah. ahead of the paywall, uh, March 23rd, save the date, start saving up your shekels. Yeah. Um, we're going to be, we're going to price it very fairly. Mm hmm. Uh, I don't Too know, cheap. Else, honestly, honestly. To honestly, we're kind of losing money by doing this. Well, I think the we're not losing money. The plan is that shirt one will basically help fund shirt two, which is also already in production. Yeah, because we're trying to be smart and professional ourselves with how we do cut and sew. I did fuck up. Um, instead of paying the forty percent <laughs> deposit deposit up front, I accidentally paid a hundred percent up front. So it's been a lean you month. You went BMF mode, bro. It's been a lean month for throwing fits. Yeah, we haven't paid. We haven't paid ourselves so that we could pay y'all in good taste. No, I can't wait. This is a banger. We can do a photo shoot tomorrow. Product shots yeah. tomorrow. It's a, it is. It is a moment. It's a. It's a big mile marker for the pod. Like us yeah. actually doing cut and sew on our own, um, overseeing production. Everything from swatch selection to, yeah, like we, well, okay, we'll get into it. We'll get into it next week. Yeah. For now. We've been collaborating for years, and it's like, why not just like try our own hand at like making something soup to nuts, yeah. tip to tail? Everyone that's touched it, we'll get into it next week. We'll get into it next yeah. week. Yeah. Just a, again, a preview to the preview because we're just, now that we have like the shirts are here in the States and we have like, not even because this was sampled out the ass, like these are finals, like we're just excited. Yeah, I hope the exuberance comes through. We can't wait for you guys to uh, to be hands on and own uh, your own. I and can't wait to fucking wear it myself. Uh, I mean, you have. You, I literally came in and I'm like, you're like, I'm gonna wear it on pot. I'm like, no, we're too early <laughs> yeah, no, to dude, wear. We're too excited, like, bro. You're gonna bust your nut fucking out the gate. Anyway, speaking of things we are actually wearing, let's do a little fit check. James, why don't you start us off as always, my friend? On the dogs, I was wearing Hip X Paraboot Michaels with the mismatched suede and levas um, on the hair. feet. Pony hair on the feet. Uh, Drifty died by the Meshman. Oh, I'm kind of blanking on his name right now. But you the mean guy that rhododendrons. Yes, rhododendrons. The dude who would show up in head to toe, south to west eight. Goat tie dye mesh 
Oh, the Meshman. You said the, did you say the Merchman? Whatever. The Meshman. The Meshman. The Meshman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out to him. I hope he's doing well. Yeah, I hope... Uh, well, listen, I know he's not being bitten by any bugs. I promise <laughs> yeah. you that much. <laughs> or drowning from the weight of his clothing. <laughs> no, right. For real. Shout out to that Speaking guy. Speaking of which, South to West State pants on the ass with the pockets that... I've told you the story, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your the friend's mesh grandfather who died in the river. Yeah, like Baby Moses. <laughs> <laughs> like baby Moses didn't die. Well, Baby Moses got dragged down the his river. People out of, leading right. my people out of Egypt. Out of Was that? Oh, Exodus. That's Exodus. Yeah. And from there, huh. went read on a to, book. From there, went on to direct uh, the Fable Mints. <laughs> Your people, I mean. <laughs> um, then I got the Satisfied Running, our Legacy Workshop uh, collab tee, which I thought I was going to wear underneath the flannel. Yeah. Or the overshirt, sorry. Um, no, it's, yeah, it's, well, it's, just, not, it's not a flannel. Right, but I'm, t- I'm mentioning my flannel, which works just as well with, honestly, yeah. if it wasn't throwing fits cut and sew year, this would be, this is for sure top 10, uh, top five personal of John's of the year. Yeah. This beautiful mauve little number going crazy. flannel from 316. They've been going ham, bro. Bro, for a denim company, like, their shirting's going crazy. I got the cardigan and the fishtail and both fucking rock. Oh, that's a cardigan? Yeah. I thought it was like a knit polo. Well, it's, well, it's a full button front, so I okay. guess, like, I mean... um. It's kind of like a comp, somewhere in between, tweener. Yeah. But yeah, they were as fucking a, slapping, bro. As an experienced Andrew. shirt maker myself, I can truly <laughs> yeah, really appreciate, are. like... <laughs> all the details. Yeah, all the details, like the little, wow, little cross-cut um, details on the pocket flaps here. Just like the fucking wash on this bad boy. I saw this <laughs> in the back room, and I was like, Andrew, I'm gonna need that. I love, like, bad boy was such, like, a... Uh, 010 or 2010 like menswear blogger like yo check out the fucking fit on this bad boy <laughs> like that was like and I and I can say this because I was the guy yeah. writing the phrase bad boy was that peak homoerotica and hashtag menswear uh, homoerotica I don't know about that it was more of like just peak fucking blackface dude a a v e fucking you know is is well, I guess bad boy would be like you'd be like a corny black guy really would be like boy. oh feel this bad boy on your fucking body. <laughs> yeah that's not actually I'm not giving enough credit to black people actually being cool that yeah. sounds like a corny white guy thing for as a corny white man um I do there's like, that corny white guy on TikTok that's like bad boy style you gotta get yourself a leather jacket who's that dude? you don't know this guy no he sounds oh terrible my god dude First wait all, are his wrecks good or no he's older than us so bad um, <laughs> boy <laughs> bad boy and he's like definitely a short bad, king. he's a bad mom <laughs> definitely a short king like tiny little dick energy and he's oh, like oh alpha that guy yeah yeah oh, he's dude, like he's you want to f- go from a nerd to a bad boy yeah three Get tips your- to make your junk look bigger yeah turn that hat around and alpha go, M. bad boy um, Bad boy mode. Towards the end of my uh, tenure at Grail, when things were getting like pretty tumultuous and they're trying to like figure out what Larry could do, <laughs> one of the things, which is funny because this is what Jenna basically does now, is I was liaising with Grail and influencers as Grail was trying to get into like become a real company, do like paid marketing, paid influencer marketing. So we were going through YouTube and I. And I like did a very oh bad God, job bro. of curating like a list because I like I'm didn't shocked. care. Hence why like I ended up no longer working there. Uh, no, <laughs> no surprises. Uh, that dude was on the list because he's just the number one. If you go to like any list, like top men's lifestyle guys on YouTube, like he's number one. He has like millions of subscribers. Yeah, but he is a he, psycho. He's the American Andrew Tate. He's the short Andrew Tate. Yeah, maybe a little less I'm sex tra- trafficking. Yeah, I don't think he's as. Listen, there's undertones of misogyny because we all know misogyny sells. Undertones, well, overtones. He's like, you want bitches to get on your bad boy penis? I don't think he says. <laughs> I don't think he says bitches or penis. I'm pretty sure he says <laughs> bitches and penis. <laughs> Top ten ways to get bitches on your penis. On your bad boy penis. That should be the title of the episode, dude. Again, with the SEO hacking. Um, yeah, Alpha M. No, 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 don't. Let's. No, I just wanna- yeah, his name is like... Um, I want to look up the, the titles his, of his episodes. His name is like Michael... What's his name? Con- Alpha M. Confidence Course. <laughs> <laughs> like pay 20 Damn, bucks to find out yeah, 10 ways to get bitches on your penis. He is your a bad boy he penis. He is a get bitches on your penis Ponzi scheme motherfucker. Um, oh, Aaron Mar- Marino. Maria. Maybe. Yeah, that's Aaron. Aaron, not Michael. Aaron Marino or something. Yeah, this guy's, a, this guy's like famous. Bro. Six scientifically proven ways to make your wood 3X harder. Harder? Um, I yeah, want to know. Yeah? It's probably supplements that he's selling. Come on, dude. Look at this fucking... No, I know. This is... How to never the get jealous The two-word trick? How wanna to grow... F- wanna fuck? <laughs> how to grow thick wrists and forearms fast. Ooh, b- off. beat off, dude. Yeah, obviously. Beat, anyway, yo, shout out fucking meat. Aaron, bro. How to be a sexy man. <laughs> There's a really great meme of this guy where it's like, you know, people... you. It's like a YouTube thumbnail meme, so it's three... 
thumbnails of his videos and it's like she cheated on me i caught her cheating again she cheated and it's like yo bro take your own advice i'm sure it's all viral clickbait Damn, but seven, imagine being married to this guy or dating this guy seven mistakes damaging your jaw and i might i might say that for you yo so i just saw a reel of his about the number one tri- trick to get a more defined jawline is drink a gallon of water today because it helps like reverse water retention and then he's like put lemon juice in it too and i was like maybe i should Drink a gallon of water. I want to fucking why, find jawline. Why are his reels being served to you? Because I'm a fucking stud. Because you're a beta that needs to learn how to be an alpha. <laughs> That's what it is. The algo Kid tips to be an alpha bad boy. The algo is like, uh, yeah, you need to learn how to be more masculine from a, a short king. Yeah. He's got good Tap hair. In. He's got good hair. He's got great hair. Good dude. stubble. Yeah, for sure. Well, that, Maybe was, this guy. that was another tip I saw, which is he said, 10, 000, when 10,000 women were surveyed about what facial hair they like from clean shaven to beard, almost all of them said 10 day stubble was the sweet spot. Sick. So he was like, you want to use a four millimeter guard. And I was like, well, I mean, his stubble looks good. So like, <laughs> yeah, did he start using it? Do you follow this guy? <laughs> no, I just have been served, I've been served up so much fucking Aaron Marino heaters, bro. Dude, your wood's about to be so hard. I hope so. After you, after you study his his ways, I, I mean, listen, fingers crossed. His techniques. Bro. I'm gonna have ten day stubble. I'm gonna have a defined jawline. I'm gonna be peeing every five minutes, and I'm gonna have the fucking hardest. Hard, I'm gonna dick on hard. We're not gonna need this trestle. You're just gonna fucking I'm gonna have prop this table up with your Dude. hard wood. Um. Anyway, shout out uh, Andrew Chen and three sixteen. Yes. Uh, I did like how as a shirtsman now you hit him with the you're blowing up. That's good, fantastic. A little bit. No, when he was on the pod, it was like we asked him because not this. This is made in India too. Oh, our shirt's made in India. Yes. We should say. Uh, this shirt and also the Western shirt that he gave me when he came on the pod. I was like, yo, what's it, like. Why you should be known as a shirting company right. almost as much as you're known as... I mean, Denim, first and foremost, with 316, yeah. all the time. It, it is also their 20th anniversary. We've said it before. We'll say it again. Their cut and sew is underrated. 316 as a brand is 1,000% yeah. underrated. Tap in and if I you think haven't already. Throw Gang Which knows, sure like has. TF, and like he's, yeah. he's in the cord. He knows what the fuck going on. Shout and out Andrew. He's, uh, Maybe, you know, I'll join his running club with my Satisfy Running RX I've seen workshop. Chuck has been logging the fucking miles with He's the bo- World's, World's Fair Running. Yeah. Shout out to Boys. World's Fair Run Club. Yeah. Shout out to Run Club. Um, Oh, and our legacy jacket that picked up while parka. in Stockholm. Fishtail parka, which, like, I had to get a 44. Yeah, the crazy size. But well, this is... This, uh, this John is, like, it's gi- billing. Ginormous. Yeah. Um, and I think they're out of a 48, so I was like, fuck it, 44. Haynes Boxers, sipping on this Swill Diet Coke, mm-hmm. Green Points, Green Points Finest, and I forgot to wear all my jewelry. Lawrence, what are you wearing? Uh, I wore uh, ALD duck boots, the kind of, uh, they're like three-eye lug. How's Fuck. the reaction been to those? Uh, well, I got, I got mainly got love because I, I got them after they sold out, so people were just like, yo, how do you get them, how do you get them? But then there was a couple people that were like shitting on them as if I designed them, and it's like, again, I hate when people do that. I, they're not, I'm not like, yo, check out this thing I made. I'm just like literally thanking. Well, you're about to I'm be. I'm thanking the homies for giving me a free thing. Why are you? Why are you argue with your grandma? Save your hate and your vitriol for when we post yeah. the shit that we actually make, which is coming this. But Thursday. also, there's going to be nothing to hate because it's perfect. It's the perfect overshirt. It really is. Um, I'm wearing Man Reese's socks. I have on vintage Levi's 501s. I am wearing a vintage Oxford cloth button down uh, from our friends at the Tomorrow Shop. I wore a vintage Carhartt Detroit jacket to the crib. I also have on a white rodeo hat. The rollie is on the wrist. Wedding ring is on the thingy. Wifey is on the pink. Wifey, wifey is on the pinky. New York adorned is in the lobe, and I have on CDLP boxer briefs today. Mm, and I'm vintage, drink, and I'm also drinking Green Points Finest. You're not doing a full martini today, huh? No, it's funny. I think they went o- that went over pretty well. I can't. That's not were a you sustainable host? way to pod. Were you, but, did you keep drinking last Monday? No, well, no. After the pod, I went home and I just took like a forbidden nap at five thirty. <laughs> then woke up ate. Chinese food and then went to bed and slept like a baby. Damn, what a day. Though, yo, my night guard came in, right? So I've been sleeping with the night guard. <laughs> I've had it for a week. The whole thing is that it's supposed to, like, make me sleep better over time. Bro, I've been having just vivid, insane dreams. Just, gr- like, now that the guard... I feel like I'm more inclined to grind with this fucking guard in my mouth. I've been sleeping like Adonis Creed, bro. Can you, send a, can you post a photo? Like, Do you it, have a photo? It's like a, it's like a you, hard you plastic wear, mouthpiece. You should wear it in the next fit check. I, I fucking sound like... Jenna's dying laughing because, like... I'll be. I'll put it on. I'll pop in a movie and like wait to fall asleep with it in. And she'll like just ask me an, an innocuous question. I'm like, "What's up, babe? What's going on?" And then she's like, "You sound like a fucking nerd." Wait, babe. so is it two separate pieces? No, no, I was wrong. One? It's just the. It's just the top. You 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 pop it in. It like clicks in. It like fucking. It's like a grill. It's like yeah, literally. It's like, truly a hard plastic. You finally grill. got. You finally got your grill yeah. dreams. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, does it help you? I don't. Know, so it's for no, grinding. I, it's for to prevent grinding. Grinding. 
but because it's just like I don't know, it's just and it's a new process that I gotta get used to. But I feel like I'm sleeping worse with it. So I don't Probably. know. So maybe I'm saving the fucking. I was gonna say pearly white. My shit is not pearly white, but it, maybe it'll save my teeth. But like my sleep has been fucking. It's been chaotic mayhem in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> worse than normal. Anyway, like shout what? out to fucking dental care. Yeah, sure. Whatever. That must be nice of dental insurance. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into meat and potatoes of the podcast. Yesterday, you watched the 95th Oscars while on an airplane. In first class, I might add. On a regional flight, mm-hmm. two and a half hour flight from Houston. <laughs> no, no, it's, no, it's, it's, so going to Texas, it's like closer, it's almost, it's a shade under four. With headwinds coming back, it's still over three hours. So okay. it's, it, first class was worth it, and if it, you know, it was a deal, so. And I had the Ramoa, so I had to fucking show up, bro. Mm, it was yeah. the maiden voyage of the Ramoa, Gotta finally. go. Yo, honestly, all right, a couple things. You were we were talking about it before I left, and you were like, "Yeah, you're gonna have to have like some strong man in 34F like assist you to like, well, put I it up what, with your weak ass." But I didn't realize that you were like, "Yeah, it's so fucking heavy." So if it's the remote that you're checking, then you're gonna pay the overweight fee oh, every single time. It's kind of. But if it's the carry on with like your underdeveloped physique, mm-hmm. um, you're yeah, you're gonna have to ask your neighbor that's also sitting next to the bathroom to lug it up for you, right? Yeah. Like it's a two man operation. Yeah, and luckily, luckily that wasn't the case. No, well, first of all, it is extremely heavy, which is like hilarious. Um, but uh, dude, it's so smooth. Like I get it's any- what's smooth? Like rolling the way it, it rolls, yeah, bro. It rolls like butter, dude. Butter down the concourse. It's 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 worth it. It's really worth it. Do you actually feel like you can't sit in the back of the plane with a Ramoa? I mean, that's like the joke that we made on the pod. I mean, I was go- when we flew down, it was uh, Comfort Plus, and we flew back first. I feel like, yeah, you can't take this any, any farther down the pecking order, really. So I'm kind of like locked into spending money on tickets, like more money than maybe I would normally, but that's not it's true. It's a doom spiral. You're yeah. In a, you're in a Ramoa-induced doom spiral. Yeah, though, you know, and we didn't take the dog, but like either way, like we're going to be in Comfort Plus, but it is kind of funny to like take your very expensive suitcase to roll it past everyone in first and then like throw it up even in Comfort Plus. Did you feel super cool walking around the airport? I can't lie. Being I, the I, guy I, with the Ramoa? I kind of did. Were people even looking at you? Like, no. no it's fu- yeah, exactly. But so, like, we've talked about this many times, and we just had did like a little interview where this came up where it's like yo if it, if anything any purchase as vapid as it may or may not be makes you feel better about yourself and improves your mood who is anyone to say otherwise like that's the whole point right uh filling the trying to fill the i guess so but then it's like soul. yeah but then it's like all right would you say the same thing to someone like with the most loud obnoxious like ostentatious like louis bag to each his own i mean okay I'm, 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 okay yeah <laughs> now i'm wow yeah now that I know how the other half lives, like, hey, who am I to judge? See, who am I to judge? Seeing how the other half cops. No, yeah. I did. I'm gonna come through next week in like f- a fucking Fendi bodysuit, like just logo out your ass, bro. Imagine no. Um, no, I felt fucking <laughs> your, your Fendi night guard. I felt, I felt fucking yeah. No, in my, with my fucking um, my new uh, night guard grill. It improved um, the overall flying experience. Yeah, it was great. I was moving real easy through security with that guy, just again <laughs> gliding, dude. Did you get VIP gliding tre- on my laurels? Did you get VIP treatment from TSA? Because no. like, yo, this guy's got a Moa. Clear the way. Yeah, let him through. Moses. Definitely the- not a terrorist. Yeah, part the seas. <laughs> this guy loves material goods too much to blow himself up. Yeah. <laughs> no. It was, uh, I mean, listen, I get that it's a luxury purchase, but as the fellow Ramoa owners can attest to, yeah, sure, you feel a little superior, but ultimately it's the it's that German engineering that just really fucking hits, dude. I heard that because they're so, and this is true, I guess, like every hard case, but. It's so inflexible that you can't like overpack. Yeah, it's pretty well. This was a quick in and out trip to Texas, so we, it wasn't ever going to be an overpacking thing. But I can see how, like, th- normally for a suitcase this size, I'd be like, yeah, I could take it for a week. Like, if we went to LA for like four or five days. But at a certain point, especially when you start throwing in camions, I can see how the rigidness is going to prevent me from maybe bringing that extra two shirts or like a couple more tees than would normally fit in a more flexible away suitcase you know that the big, I would you know use the, in the past. The big brain past. hack around this is you actually pack your suitcase while it's on its wheels. So you kind of stack the shirts uh, so you can press them down. I see. See what I'm saying? Use like gravity you, to go. You're packing vertically versus horizontally. You pack vertically, yeah. I just don't. I look. saw a TikTok. People were like, "Yo, I was able to fit like forty percent more shit Damn, in my suitcase when you pack it, when you stack and just press down." And you're like, obviously, you're compressing your shit and like wrinkling it, but pack whatever. To stack. Yeah, interesting. I guess that's just a hack that would work for the pack stack hack is going to work for any suitcase, rigid or otherwise. That's just like a good piece of advice. Yeah, for Damn. sure. But I just feel like with the with it, you know, being like open, like you know, like like uh, like a on an angle, it'd be hard to like. Maybe more would fit. I don't know. I'll have to try it out. Does it have like a like a zip? 
inner no it has it has these like inner panels that like velcro like you it's like crazy vel it's actually like a little confusing so <laughs> i need like listen i didn't have to consult the I'm not the suitcase is hard I did, I hard did, as your wood i didn't need to consult the owner's manual but did you like, have to watch it a does take a little trial and error did you watch a youtube tutorial no. on how to pack your mo no dude yeah. No. Um, okay. Well, we got a little ahead of ourselves. Oh, yeah, first sorry. and foremost, you were um, watching the Oscars in yeah. first class mm -hmm. with your 80 pound Ramoa above your head, <laughs> just waiting to fall on on you and, and just you. crush me. So we talked about this with the Grammys. Yeah. And we're gonna kind of like we were vindicated and like our point was proven, and it's not like a revolutionary point, but it's like yo, celebrity style menswear is in this fucking weird rut where like mm. everyone is just doing too much. Everyone's just going for it. Everyone wants that like the viral fucking moment, mm -hmm. the headline, and no one has yet to really fucking nail it yet. No, nah, every it's always misses. Everyone's shooting for the moon. They're not even landing on the stars. Nah. They're landing in the fucking Atlantic Ocean. Shit is ass. I think this was pretty clear uh, last night with a lot of instances, and we'll kind of go through them. But like, I don't know. Just what are your first impressions from what you saw on your little? Fucking <laughs> yeah. first class TV. Well, it's not that little because, again, it is first. No, the red carpet rut is absolutely real. And as we talked about with the Grammys, the Grammys have become this like VMA esque fucking clown show to the nth degree. Whereas the Oscars is Hollywood's biggest night. This is the most prestigious award show probably on the fucking planet. And you would expect people to keep it a little conservative, which, which they that, do, which they do, which they do, which again is all relative because, again, in this era, specifically of menswear that we're in, People still, people and their celebrities and their stylists rather still tend to like try to hit you with a fucking swerve. And unfortunately, a lot of these are fucking L's. By my estimation, there was one great fit and a couple decent ones, and then the rest was truly straight garbage. What was the one good fit? Mezcal. Mez Mezcal. Mezcal. Mainly because it. He's, he's basically doing a straight man's non-queer baiting version of what Harry Styles does. Uh, he had the little the small hoop. He had the they-them Bushwick-ass mullet. Yeah, fashion um, mullet was hitting. The open, double-breasted, white dinner jacket. Loved with the it. The black pants. Super flared. Super crazy Huge flares. flare. With a fucking cuff. Yes. The flares were... Mm, were they like, too flared? When they when you when you when you when it swallows the entire shoe, except yeah. for like the little fucking they, tip. I think I couldn't even tell if those were boots or what. I honestly couldn't even tell yeah. you. Yeah, I fucked the rose. I don't really, and I say this kind of with a grain of salt because I'm not like the the suitsman of the two. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know if I'm into the the white dinner jacket look with the black pants or like the mismatching colors. Like for me, it's just like why not go, like why not go all white, go all white That's or all lot. black. Sure, and a lot of people do go all black. I don't think it's anyone wore an all white. Seth Rogen, who we'll get to as like an honorable mention, did that like slate that was gray with the white, which like, like a, it was like a, like a shiny gray. Yeah, that gray is not that like weird like yes, yeah, whether shark skin or kind of like silk slubby. Like that didn't really work, even though like and also by the way, Seth Rogen has become so fucking insufferable. By the way, come on the pod. Yes, um, we'd love to have you. But um, so I think like the whole the aura around him of like being this kind of like corny version of himself even though like he did fine in the fablemans like makes the fit worse with that said yeah mezcal's a uh, two-tone situation i will say as the suitsman is a classic like indiana jones in the temple of doom rocking that i believe there's probably james bond fits where it's the white dinner jacket the black pants i thought he pulled it off extremely well and i actually think it's more classic than maybe you're giving it credit for whereas Sorry, i think I'm not, it's saying, a, I'm not saying it's classic i think that it's such like you're like oh i'm doing that move it's Where better it's so, than wearing it's all so white conspicuous is it why is it better than wearing all white i think the the contrast and the classic nature of of that specific look i think it, it's a more of a it's a classic nod versus the all white is a bit like to me screams diddy memorial day yacht party What's wrong with that? <laughs> okay, that's racist. That's, damn, actually, that yeah. yeah, that one sounded very racist. You're talking about the number one bad boy. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> that's so a C-hole bad boy. What, so who would be? So who's your? If you had to give, if you had to give a best dressed out, dude, I don't know, man. Uh, hot black guy from Top Gun. Oh, Charles Parnell looked fucking sick, mainly because he's just a hot old black great, guy, great haircut, with, uh, with amazing hair. He's the new Morgan Freeman he was like, now. He was that like, Freeman went chrome dome. He was like Jay Z in album mode with the hair, <laughs> yeah. kind of like grown out, but not like too like right. too messy. Um, I mean, he looked fire with in the midnight blue, which like I was like, yo, if I ever went to the Oscars and in my opinion, it's like you you stay kind of conservative with the small C. You do uh, more classic. You don't try to do too much. Yeah. Maybe a little fucking style swerve here and there. But I would do midnight blue tuxedo mm -hmm. kind of like what you did, I believe, at your wedding. True. Mm -hmm. With just like white shirt, black bow tie, 
midnight blue, maybe contrast black lapels. I don't know, but like yeah. a shawl lapel. No, that, you definitely want the contrast lapel, but nothing what are you doing on the feet? Nothing too crazy. I don't know. Just like uh, maybe that's where you get a little nutty, like a little like maybe like a big heel or something. So Idris Elba looked fine. He went navy blue tuxedo jacket, black pants. OK, a little bit different than what you're saying. Contrasty in his own way. But then he fucking threw on those terrible kilted loafers that like kind of ruined the whole thing. Yeah. It's tough, man. It's, it's a lot of dudes. It's apparently um, harder to nail than you and I are maybe giving you credit for it I, because I don't know. A lot of dudes uh, kind of ruin their shit with their with their shoes. Namely, I don't know if it was <laughs> could be ruined even more. But Jonathan Majors with his fucking bro, bozo what is, the clown clown shoes. He dressed like Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> what like it's like a like, what is his deal? He looks like a circus ringleader. He's from what I understand, he's fire as a guy. But these weird like old timey conductor. Charlie Chaplin ass yeah. fits like what? Who is his stylist? I think the designer of Capital. Like what the fuck? It's bizarre. Some, there's a mouse in my hat. <laughs> yeah, he's like right? a steampunk ass motherfucker. <laughs> he does. He's going full steampunk. He looks like uh, he seems like a fire dude. But then like with these fits, I'm like, bro, I don't want to be like, I don't want to talk to you. Like I don't want to be sitting. Ne- I don't want to be standing next to you at a party. I don't want to be caught like stuck with you in a conversation. He and he's like bringing around this fucking mug so he can drink his tea. He's like a published poet. It <laughs> seems like very kind of obnoxious. And it yeah. comes through in the fits. The, I don't know. The link up with Michael B. Jordan is hilarious because they're both like huge, the, huge well, individuals for sure. And then the other sign of like the other side of the corny coin, where like also by the way, I'd rather do if I had to, if I was if my physique was that buff and I could go Charlie Chaplin mode, a la Jonathan Majors, or wearing a fucking waist trainer girdle like Michael B. Jordan, I'd rather go Majors mode. I mean, Michael B. Jordan had like almost like the hourglass figure. He was looking like a baddie. Like my, my wood was almost three times hard because um, he was, he, he just, yeah, he doesn't dress for the body type. What people were killing uh, Channing Tatum for, mainly also us going <laughs> fucking viral with like the shoulder divots and the big David Byrne ass oversized suit. Like it's funny to then see another buff guy go like way too tight where like you almost then get the same problem problem where like if he's standing the wrong way like on the red carpet like the sleeves look horrendous yeah like totally sloppy to me it was more just like the the, the waist was just too, 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 too taken in, in at the waist and he had like a fucking hourglass figure yeah like throw bbl on him and i might fucking <laughs> smash yo speaking of bbl quest loves asses <laughs> ginormous dude i almost feel for him on some like whale shit <laughs> <laughs> i mean and I'm so over the cro- bro, the Crocs. I know that's his thing. Oh, but it's yeah, like, yeah. But anyway, I mean, at least Questlove is, I guess, cool. I, I guess know, he needs, like, comfortable footwear when he's toting around that thing. But he's like, a he- big boy. Yes. And that's fine. We don't we don't fat shame. No. Except we're not well, out here. Well, well, hold on. We're what? not out here naming movies The Whale. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or El Mucho Grande. <laughs> What uh no you have to you have to speaking of this because okay all right what? why don't you want to watch the whale why don't you tell the people what you told me what did I say what did you say what you, you were like I'm not trying to be fat phobic but I feel like the whale is going to gross me out yeah <laughs> <laughs> I know it smelled crazy in there yeah it, for I, real. it just seems like a bummer it's just like a dude that's like yeah it's really fucking fat and <laughs> like and therefore his life sucks mm-hmm. and he can't do anything he can't move and like. I didn't really see. I didn't really follow along. Like obviously, Brendan Fraser won Best Actor, deservedly so. It, it was the it was the phrase of sans. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't really following along with like the whale, except like hearing that Darren Aronofsky. When you first heard like Darren Aronofsky has directed a movie, yeah. where Brendan Fraser plays a six hundred pound man, and it received like a twenty five minute standing ovation yeah. at the fucking Cannes well, Film Festival. Well, it, that caught my attention. But then when. I kind of lost interest after that. Then when he's like doing his speech and having a fucking panic attack Meltdown. and breathing like a, how I imagine a 600 pound person <laughs> breathes on the Oscars watched by several million people around the world. Not that many. Yeah, um, He was going through it for sure. And the fucking. You know, like the nautical the fa- references. He had like 25 nautical that was, references. Uh, yeah. It's like, stop trying to make the whale a thing. And then like the photo of him shirtless in the background just blurred. <laughs> no, that's kind of like <laughs> lurching over him. That was like tough, a 25 dude. foot. Yeah. 600 pound Brendan Fraser. What's 25 times 600? That's how yeah. many pounds you get. That's just they math, won. Folks. It won the makeup Oscar, and then they're just showing like the disgusting, like sloppy. I'm like, this is it's a tough. It's a tough scene, dude. I know. And then the, like the the voiceover was like uh, the makeup artist because they used like they didn't use any CGI. Brendan Fraser was able to use his full yeah. range of uh, emotion. Whatever. Uh, I w- <laughs> full range of emotion. Yeah. Uh, Brendan Fraser's kids look sick though. Well, they're like models. It's like Pierce Brosnan's kids. All these guys have just like fucking Liam Gallagher's kids. All these dudes from like that that are now. 
because they're of the like all those guys are what like 60 70 Liam I mean, Gallagher's kid throwing fits forward yeah thank you very much. shout out to homie uh, I don't think he's a patron well hope, hopefully so but either way um it's crazy to think that that generation of dudes it's crazy to think that hot guys would have hot fucking seeds I know. bro damn but they're all that models fatphobic about the whale? I just, a little bit and, and I, I will see say, the, see it. the movie sucks. It's sanctimonious and saccharine, and it's not good with no, that No, no, we're said. not talking about Tar. We're talking about the whale. Please, bro, don't get me started. We're going to get to it. But no, Brendan Fraser and then um, Hong Chow. Is that what? her name? The, I think so. The, the, um, who was nominated for Best, <laughs> nominated for, for best uh, Supporting Actress. Uh, they were fantastic and definitely uh, deserved their nominations. But overall, the yes, movie, that, that is no, no Thanks to Aronofsky, is... I don't know if people like fucking. I think it was pretty polarizing, like a lot of these movies. Besides Top Gun Maverick, which well, it's one of these movies where it's like it it's sucked. Dude. The one of the it's one of the movies where, and I felt this way about Tar, where it's only singularly about like the main the lead performance. Excuse me, and I guess with the whale. Well, Hong Chow Chow got her fucking flowers to some yeah. degree. Um. Anyway, uh. So who did you think looked the best then? Parnell, Charles Parnell. That's it. Uh, Paul Mez Mezcal. I don't know how to say it. Mezcal. I should, I should know how to say it. It's like, all right, Irish. here's the thing. Like, so Andrew Garfield looked fine. He always looks good. Not that's a that was a Fendi tuck. Some of the details aren't great. Uh, I loved the pants and the boots and that look. Here's my thing too. When you go to Normie, so this is the other thing, right? You either like fully out there. Look at uh, Barry Keegan looked like shit, yeah. right? Which is a bummer. Paul Danow looked like fucking shit. He was wearing Dolce, which I mean Dolce How is do never you good. His name? Paul Danow. It's Dano. It's not just Dano. It's Dano. Dano. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Either way. Dano. He was a fuck. The fucking Riddler, dude. Favorite movies. Um. Yeah. Steven Sp- Mr. Spielberg. Um. Another guy in Dolce, Colin Farrell. The GOAT, who everyone loves, but approval rating, maybe even higher than Brendan Fraser. And then it's just like it's a normal fit, and the Irish flag on the pin, the Irish pin flag is cool. But it's like, if you're Colin Farrell, like you want him to go harder. I'd rather that... Because he's an icon. I'd rather the icons just maybe play it safe on Oscar night. Um... The other the the independent spirit awards like that's where you go fucking crazy. Really, like, that the shit that no one watches and no one sees. Uh, the the use it as R and D fit R and D. Go viral, yeah, exactly. It's like when you run, when you run an errand on a Saturday. Um, here's a very specific example of what I kind of want. Do you remember when McConaughey? Yeah, I don't know why you don't remember when McConaughey <laughs> won for Dallas Buyers Club. Do you remember okay. he wore the velvet emerald green tux? Okay, that's it was hard. yeah exactly. When you look, speaking of Riddler, he's basically like yeah, <laughs> but like <laughs> he's in the money suit. And I don't know if Farrell thought like he had like a real chance, but he's like you know one of the top guys there, nominated for best actor. I just would want like that's a dude who I want to give a little more, or his stylist to give a little more. Who cares? He didn't yeah. fuck up. That's all that matters. Who else should we mention? He's partying with cocaine bear afterwards. Oh, uh, okay, let's see. Boring. Austin Butler. Oh, okay. What do okay. we? Okay, stop talking. Like, what, please what, kill. What me. do we think about the fit? Please kill. What me. do you think about the big my, sho- shoulder my, pads? My shoulders are my shoulders are bigger than my, my personality. Looks like a fucking Tom Brown uh, fucking football runway he shoulder like, pad. He looked like Frankenstein. He looked like Lurch. I I and dude, I love Butler, bro. My most his hair, looked, his hair was fire. Bro, he's so fucking good looking, and he and he. He was on his Ozempic was fucking hitting too hard though. He was like his. Oh, you think he's too gaunt? He looks sickly. What do you think of Mindy Kaling? Could she get it? Uh, no, not really. (laughs) Not for me. She was the one. The girl that introduced the "Not Too Nazi" song. Speaking of my. Penis. South Asian (laughs) brethren. Thinking of your bad boy penis. Yeah. (laughs) Talking about my bad boy Wood. Uh, my who I don't know who that was, but when she said anti colonialist, woo. Oh yeah. Woo. Well, the fact that you refuse to watch that movie because it's long. I didn't I, refuse to watch. Yeah. Well, I don't have three dude, and a half it hours is to spare. Non stop psycho action. It is incredible. And the fact that it, well, of course, it's too good of a movie and too fun and too sick to be nominated Look, for anything besides best song, but it should have been nominated for best foreign feature for sure. If you're telling me it was awesome that it's four and a half hours <laughs> of just brown dudes getting sturdy, dude, getting, as they were on the fucking Oscars stage, getting sturdied on Brits, dude. Really? It's just the whole, stomping out their fucking... The whole movie is about Brits getting faded, bro. Just stomping out their Catching gross fades teeth? left and right, yeah. Fuck featuring yeah. A, Featuring fucking exotic big cats and animals that are also fucking fighting with the boys, the fellas. Oh, you gotta watch it. I'll watch it. It's so long. It's the most fun four hours you could possibly It's have. four hours? It's, it's up oh there. God, I think it's oh. like a shade under four. Anyway, Jesus. if it's still streaming, highly, I highly recommend was it. That, was the woman that introduced Natu Natu in the movie? I do not remember. It was again, you know, she was wearing the, the Tiffany diamond. I don't even remember. That might have been. They might have been doing a, a public uh, PA announcement. Oh. So then this, so I had, that was on a delay. All right, well, you know, I, I lost part of the um, the broadcast. Yeah, all the dudes that won from Nacho Nacho, I think they won like best song. They won best original song. Yeah, yeah, those guys that came through, like the fucking yeah, the, the with the white beard and the yeah the who's like the who's the actor that plays Leo's dad on Wolf of Wall Street. 
uh, Rob Reiner. Rob Reiner. But he's dead. He's died? I think so. No. Hold on. Let's double check. Keep keep going. What, what, like, what about Rob? Why are you talking about Rob Reiner? Indian Rob Reiner looked hard. With, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, with like the with the with the scruffy white beard, the long white beard. Rob Rob Reiner is still alive. Yeah. Police report. Shout out Rob Reiner. But yeah, that's Leo's dad, Rob Reiner. Yeah. <laughs> you know who wasn't in the in, <laughs> Indian Rob Reiner. You know who wasn't in the in memoriam was the woman that Alec Baldwin killed? Was that really? was that 2022? She might have got yapped last year. What about the chick from uh, the model who died in um Triangle Triangle Status. Status. They didn't she apparently wasn't in it either. Damn. Saw Feidelberg tweeting about it. He was very concerned about an uh, 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 unhonored smoke show. <laughs> you know, she died. Her dog. What? Her How? dog passed some disease to her. Oh, she fucking no, died. dude. Yeah. She was Killed su- by man's best friend. She was sucking off her dog, <laughs> and she got dog AIDS, and she died. Damn. The, uh, That's the real the, tri- number, the number one killer of white women. That's the real triangle <laughs> of sadness, is when you get dog AIDS in your... Because you sucked off your dog? Also, yeah. this is so offensive to this poor smoke show who died. Dude. She didn't I'm, suck off her dog. The, allegedly, these are the rumors. <laughs> Indian Rob Reiner told me. <laughs> She's got to beat the canine blowjob yeah. fucking allegations from the grave? Yeah, dude. Oh, you know White what? women love sucking off dogs. What are you talking about? I googled the um, the Morgan Freeman uh, sleeping with his step-granddaughter thing that we've yeah. talked about before on pot. You know, that's a rumor that didn't actually happen. It what? was a National Enquirer thing that both of them had to address. And they're like, this is crazy. This never happened. Really? So we gotta fucking we gotta make right, bro. You saw his hand? You saw he's wearing a glove? Oh, he's you know, on some, well, he's this, on some DJ Paul shit. Well, this is this is the same shit that everyone was talking about during the World Cup opening ceremony. Remember, people were like, what's going on? Yeah, he's got like a he's, he's got, got a, a fucked up hand. Yeah, it looks like well, it looks like fake. Damn, bro. Not this even DJ the, Paul looks like like Pinocchio. This is the second week of we talk about people with fucked up hands. I know, dude. Yeah, shout out uh, all the fucking Tyrannosauruses. Thank God this is behind the paywall. We'll never be public on YouTube. I'm trying to think other, just real quick, because we right, got to move we'll off fits. Through. So, uh, also, oh, Riz Ahmed, <sighs> the Aki way. What was going on there? The he's with a crazy oversized collar. Well, that's a new. That's Prada Fall Winter Twenty Three. Fucking I team, hate it. Hashtag Team Early. You I can't show sternum at the Oscars. You need to do. Something, not a white tee, but like <laughs> honestly, the white tee might have gone hard. Or a white, a wife pleaser. Uh, what about Pedro Pascal? Uh, I wasn't f- again. This like kind of old the tiny, band collar. It's like Zenia. Like, that was Zenia. Yeah, but it's like you're dressing like the Duke of Windsor or some shit when in like a way that's try- trying to like usurp. It's like trying to be <laughs> progressive and new. First but of all, the Duke of Windsor always had a tie because he famously had a knot named after him, the Windsor knot. But okay. I get your point. I'm just saying, like, instead just of looking like you're at, at, at fucking a, a high ball, like, <laughs> just wear a fucking bow tie. Yeah, uh, the ingredients for Pedro were there, but there was collar gap, which, again, when you don't even, when there is really no collar or no tie, it's even more pronounced. And then the trousers, I get they're trying to, he's trying to do, like, a or the style, shout out Julia Regolia, I know the stylist, but, like, um, they're trying to do like a longer, fuller trout, but like the break, how it sat on the shoes, like did look pretty sloppy. So that that could have used a bit of a hem. Mm. Damn. When do you think? When do like dudes get their fits for the Oscars, and then like how much time do they have to like tailor their shit? I don't know. I've heard like war stories and horror stories from the trenches where like it's it's being hemmed like up like until the minute of. before like you hit. Damn, that's awesome. oh another guy who did white jacket, uh, black trout, Rocky. With the contrast black lapels on that was Gucci. Gucci that's got to be Gucci. Uh, I mean Rocky. He's, he's Rocky. Rocky. He can't really. I mean, um, tasteful he, grills on the molar grills. So for the big night, once again, not only am I the nominee, no Shadramas. We're going to talk about yeah. the big winners um, and me calling my shot early, in a little bit, but also like when I was in the New York Times and <laughs> you, you were quoting the New York Times saying, "I love the idea of a guy in leather." Love a man in leather. The I just the idea of one. <laughs> <laughs> Gay. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, I love a little subtle grill. Yeah. And he has them in the way fucking back. Mullers. And our boy, damn, a guest, an upcoming guest where we don't know the live date yet. Oh, but yeah. he also had the same shit where it's like you only really catch a flash of it, mm-hmm. a glimpse of it, if they're like really laughing or yucking up or if they're like saying Celebrating like, their baby moms. Or saying pee <sighs> pee and like really you get, you get a glimpse of it back there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think a subtle grill, like a one piece or a two piece is... Definitely something. I don't know leather too. I mean, you you, you were right. You were on the fucking nail there too. I'm surprised we didn't see any pics of really Rocky on the red carpet. I know he's just there as. Con- I mean, he's a list regardless of their, whether he's supporting Rihanna or just like on his dolo shit. But like, we had to Google because you just saw the him like cheersing Rihanna during the the live broadcast. Yeah, and he was like behind Kimmel for one second. Yeah. But I don't know. I guess he just uh, 
Maybe you're just taking care of the baby while Rihanna was like actually walking the red carpet because she was she came like super late and last. Yeah, she is the queen. Yeah, even though it's uh, the song is terrible, bro. We have let's call a spade a spade. The song is not good. Whoa, 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 oh, fuck, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bad song. Uh, yo, my apologies. That was that's Wakanda forever. Oh, yo, so I went bowling over the weekend, and um, Asher with the Big Hog was there. Yeah, and he sucked, but he got a strike. And he fucking turns around and he just goes, yo! And we're like, bro, oh stop doing the condom forever. Jesus He's like, Christ. no, it's a strike sign. Anyway. <laughs> trying to save your ass right now. Yeah, no, nah, that, so was, that was really in. bad. Uh, the song is terrible and Rihanna's not a fucking songstress. We've talked about it. She's not, a, she's not a fucking belter. She's an entertainer. Though I guess if the other thing you could get is Lady Gaga doing like this stripped down um, emotional fucking, you know, lead in about a song from Top Gun Maverick. I don't want that either. Know, so I it's th- like. I thought it was a bit. Honestly, outside of Her the sure fucking. Her was on Inside Out. <laughs> Jerry Lorenzo style, and then her Gunner fucking, Stahl style. <laughs> so she, she had. I was like, "What's wrong with her mouth?" So she had on mad, uh, full red lip. Yeah, and then like did like a bare no makeup. Yeah, no, I know she but went like, for it. She bared her soul. A bunch of mi- bi- missed a bunch of lipstick on the on the top of her bottom lip. So it just yeah. looked like she had a fucked up lip. A nice little. Uh, she looks like the Joker. I was gonna say a nice little pro- uh, preview for a Joker two Falia do. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think who else any fits were missing real quick because we got to move on. From All right, uh, not too, not too guys look fire. Yeah. Uh, the Rock looks like trash. Oh, Michael the Rock. Jordan. Oh God. Um, Barry Key. Yeah, that's kind of it. Saran wrap salmon at the fucking Wegmans, bro. The, the Daniels Rock looked, looked like some fucking like Ugh. the the art school film school kids you don't want to talk to, bro. Fucking terrible fits. Yeah. Holy um, shit. But big winners of the night. Yeah. And yes, I was. Okay, here we go. Okay, everything everywhere all at once. Um, my. Favorite movie of the year. Seven Oscars, many of which were uh, like top line joints. Best picture, best director, best lead actress, best supporting actress, best original screenplay as well. Yeah. They went, they fucking killed it, bro. This is the, apparently, in terms of big money Oscars, this is the most successful movie at the Academy Awards in 95 years. Right. And people kept. Your movie of the year last year. It was my favorite movie of the year. That doesn't mean like you're like, yo, do you feel vindicated? I'm like, no, I don't like these awards. Like, uh-huh. it's not one to one. It's the like, not I, in Nostradamus. I really enjoyed seeing that movie in theaters sure. and on a plane. It <laughs> made me feel a full range of emotions. There was, and I know the fucking subhumans on subreddit are going to call me out on this. There is a like immigrant parent yes. uh, angle to this that was very heavily mentioned in um, all their speeches, especially like the Daniel Kwan. Yeah. The Asian Daniel. <laughs> I was going to say, his name's not Daniel. Daniel Kwan. His name what is are you not talking about. You want you think his name is Daniel? Yeah. Well, Google it. What do you think his name is? It's like it's it's um uh, hey uh uh what's hey Kwan? Talk about the director, you fucking oh, Philistine. Fuck. You fucking idiot. Oh, Daniel Kwan. Yeah, damn, bro. My yeah, bad. Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shine. No, out. the the um fucking Yeah, all them. Uh, key, no, the key, 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 yeah, that's that, what I'm thinking yeah. about. Fuck. Data, <laughs> data. What well, data? His was like the refugee camp. That whole thing. Damn, Dana Kwan too was like my parents. We're proving the point of why this movie needs to exist, literally, know, right now in real time. You're welcome. The craziest thing was when big he, galaxy brain level shit. I, I'm. I've always wondered, like, has Spielberg ever come out and been? And I know I'm not getting on my woke Jimmy shit, but it's like, has Spielberg ever been like? Yo, I'm sorry that I depicted you in such like a terrible racist way oh. back in the '80s, and kind of like created this Asian stereotype that has followed both you and so many Asian people yeah. uh, around their lives since like '80 whatever. When he did Goonies, when he did um, Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. No, Which one was that? Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom. The one featuring the tuxedo I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, has Spielberg ever said anything? Not that know, he like probably. has to. I'm just wondering if he has. Presumably. And then also know. like when he. Uh, when he was like hugging Harrison Ford, it's also just like, yo, bro, I'm so sorry that I fucking, you know, like uh, was complicit in like you being such a racist trope. And then also like that not Dr. Doing, Jones to death and then not doing anything for the last like 30 years to get you back in the industry yeah. in front of the camera. He was like working behind the camera as a stunt coordinator on X-Men. Um, and yeah, he was fire. Uh, the Daniels, I think that they were like th- it, their whole shit was very sweet. But it's also just like I you're so annoying. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like. 
the one award that I'm because like yo, shout out to fucking Michelle Yo and and shout out to them getting the best original screenplay. It was like new IP, which is something we've even you, someone who's like not as much of a movie fanatic as me, like we've talked about how and they even fucking made fun of this, you know, in Kimmel's monologue or whatever. But like the fact that it's a new IP, give them that. I don't think they should have then also won fucking best director. All right, let's get into Larry Snubs. Who do you think was snubbed? Well, the fact that Tar, the best movie of the year, walked away with fucking zilch zero bagel is crazy town, bro. You, I know you. <laughs> Sorry, I need my night guard. First of all, the fact that we were talking about movies earlier and you go, yeah, the movie's about cancel culture. Who cares? It's not about cancel culture. Oh, what's it about, Lawrence? What, what homework did you have to do to understand the movie that you watched? I mean, what, f- what extracurricular reading did you have to parse through <laughs> to fucking go back and be like, oh, yeah, no, that you didn't steal that pencil? You don't think that a movie could be so transformative and stay with you that you'd want to read about it after the fact? I think that's pretty Yeah, that happened thing. to me with After Sun. <laughs> And then happened to me EO. while I was watching EO when I Googled, what the fuck is this movie about yeah. while watching it? I felt like After Sun didn't, first of all, shout out A24, who's fucking, whose fingerprints were all over this thing and had like the most successful Oscars ever from a studio, let alone one that's like, how old is A24? Is he 10 years old as a studio? Like, that's crazy. Yeah, I think so. Uh, after <laughs> After Sun, well, I'm just saying, yo, fucking crazy glove. After Sun could have deserved more love. I thought it was, that was how? another Where? Fact. Where? How? I, could, I think it could have been even Best Picture. It was that good, bro. It's really fucking. That was a. Emo- that's talk about the whale, the, the, like this show versus tell thing. Like after Sun, that's real emotion. That's real tears, not some like fucking Aronofsky fake galaxy brain level bullshit. In my opinion, at least. Yeah. And then Tar getting no Oscars is crazy. Um, Why well, was Tar? Why did you like Tar so much? Because I really was like, this is long. Okay, it's like a powerful, powerful performance. By fucking Miss Kate, but it was just like, yeah. Well, all I think, right, like I think when you that happened, I think when you view the movie as this fantasy fever dream, that angle that a lot of people are going with, and we, we talked about and this. It, and has the, the director or the writers like they said that that's no, what it is. T- Todd Todd Field, shout out fucking him. He's he's basically was like, um, I don't want to over explain this to people. Like, <laughs> that's not what yeah. I. <laughs> Maybe because he was like, I'll do the work like, for me. He was like, he was like, wait, damn, like that is that yeah, sounds yeah, kind yeah, of that's, fire. What, that's what I was doing. Yeah, Yo, that's, let him cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that. Let um, Twitter cook. I thought that uh, in terms of snubs, I, I would I would take the one award I'm taking away from everything, everywhere, all at once. Even if it's not my best picture, I think like this is the Academy doing fan service, right? Is Tar not just like uh, uh, one of those movies that makes like not smart people feel really smart oh, if they get into it? Totally. And also, like totally. I'm and then also that. like people that are too smart, they're like, oh, everything, ever all at once was too fucking. It was too fun. It was too like derivative. Well, I like a fun like, movie, but I think. Um, Top Gun should have won Best Picture. Top Top Gun. The fact that it was nominated, the fact that Tom Cruise couldn't be bothered to leave the Mission Impossible 13 set to come like tap in is Bro, pretty pretty big dick move. I fuck with that. He's too busy saving movies. Yeah, right. Like, exactly. And the fact that James Cameron didn't come obviously because he's an egomaniac and he wasn't nominated for Best Director was kind of hard. Just like completely. I didn't know he was nominated for Best Picture. Yeah, yeah. Another. That's we'll talk about absurd. the two people that saved movies are Jim Cameron and Tommy Cruise. I mean, that's yeah. that you can't fucking argue with that. All right. So what are Larry okay, Snubs? So I'm taking. So I'm taking away best director from the daniels and i've kind of i want to throw spielberg low-key like a um a a bone for like a fucking honorary career oscar even though i believe he won for schindler's list and maybe even saving private ryan even though saving private ryan famously lost best picture um when it probably should have won uh and i'll probably give to spielberg or i'll give to todd fields for tar fields fields i don't know if spielberg had won best director or best picture any of the big ones Mm -hmm. for uh making a movie about himself making movies and (laughs) obviously the the snake sucking its own dick yeah oris boris of uh oral boral of hollywood where like they just fucking love movies about movies but that typically is how it goes if that had happened i would have fucking fired up (laughs) kanyewest.com I would have streamed everything. I would have gone full con and just be like, yeah, like the fucking, this is such a conspiracy. This is some bullshit. This is some, so you take it back to, you know, you know. run Hollywood. No, no I understand. Yeah. I know everyone knows where you're going with it. You don't need to be that explicit. You don't need to go full Kanye. Um, as much as a, another movie about movie magic is like, you know, such a trope at the Academy Awards, I was surprised all, you know, chosen people affiliation aside, I was surprised how much I actually enjoyed that movie. And no, I just are, watched that at home. Are Asians the new Jews in Hollywood? I don't know. Dude, the fact that this... Oh, Daniel Scheinhardt is, I believe, a chosen person as well. 
Oh, sure. Right. The the white Daniel. Yeah. Um, again, apologies to Mr. Kwan uh, for my <laughs> flub earlier. That was pretty fucking racist. Yeah. Again, that proves the Not point. as racist as you saying a spade is a spade. That, that, but you know, that, that was, was completely unintentional. Uh, or my dragged comment from I'm off. This is I got a weird I got a weird Texas hangover, dude. <laughs> yeah. Too much too much brisket, too many beers, too many burgers. Too much, too much, too let's many go blasting darts, dude. It was too all the Brandon. I went What's quad star count on the weekend, do you think? Oh, I uh keep track. At the party. Well, I bought twelve. To the party, and I drank them all, so okay. at the party. Um, and you were just there for one party? For my brother-in-law's 50th uh, birthday party, and then uh, his girlfriend, by all, for all intents and purposes, my sister-in-law, they, was, they did a joint 50th birthday party. Got it, got it. Um, this is Jenna's brother. Okay, so you're um, 12 Lone Stars over the weekend. That's not yeah. bad. Yeah. No, but I just, I don't it's know. Less than Larry's does it. But I don't know. I'm just coming back all fucking unintentionally all fucking racist. racist. Yeah, it's fucking, I'm sorry, guys. You know, I'm better than this. Uh, I'm trying to think other, other snubs. I thought, I, I kind of wish that Colin Farrell had won uh, Best Actor. Or like Banshees had gotten more more love. Yeah, honestly, in terms of my best actor pecking order, everyone knew it was going to be Frazier because this is Hollywood apologizing to him for, for basically. For fingering his asshole. For, <laughs> That's what happened. For him being That's sexually assaulted. He, his ass got fingered. Believe all whales. At, um, the, at the Emmys? No, it's the Golden Gate. It's the, the, the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press. Is that guy still... Did he get him out the paint? I don't know, dude. They, the Hollywood Foreign Press operates on such like a fucking mafia mob mentality. They should have just... Like, that dude is probably got, probably got promoted even higher. They should have fucking Eastern promised and just... Or Banshees, Banshees of you know, sharing his two fingers yeah. as punishment instead of giving Brendan Fraser... Best actor at the Oscars. I feel like that's a better trade off. Oh, or one, more fair trade off. One joke I would like to repeat. I don't know how lock, locked in you were on the timeline, but uh, shout out Paulie Christo, the homie, one of the most elite underrated Twitter followers. He was like, Was Banshees of Interstellar actually that good? He's like, I feel like y'all capping. I thought that was funny calling it Banshees of Interstellar. Oh, okay. Um, I guess maybe it's not as funny saying it out loud. I, um, do, I do love it when you uh, think of tweets to just remember and read out loud. <laughs> well, I mean, that's part of the job. I want you in the movie mindset. I don't want you on fucking Twitter, the Twitter timeline. Um, okay, let me think. Oh, best actor pecking order. I would go Frazier and then I'll go Butler over Feral, to be honest. I thought Elvis. I, can't I, stop I think Elvis. It. I mean, Elvis was fun and stupid and like gigantic and just so dumb, but he talk about a movie star making turn. If he would have won, I'm not mad. He, for, for, regardless of getting your butthole fingered or not. Like he he crushed Butler did. Boz Lerman. Straight? <laughs> Does a bear shit in the woods? Yes. Boz Lerman, straight? Hell no. Wait, sorry, what? Yeah, I know so, I kind of <laughs> said it wrong. <laughs> Is the cocaine bear shit in the woods? No, Boz Lerman is definitely gay as hell. Does the cocaine bear have the coke shits in the woods? <laughs> yeah, right. Damn good tweet. What do you think? Very of- timely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you think of the cocaine bear cameo? Pretty oh, dumb. funny. I thought uh, I like it. I like Elizabeth Banks ever since her. Um, Did you see star- Cocaine Bear? No, ever since her star turned in forty year old virgin, mm. uh, rapping Missy Elliott. But she came out almost tripped. I thought it was like she was funny when she brought a cocaine bear. Yeah, it was a good tie-in. Better tie-in than the Little Mermaid shit. Who gives a fuck? Bro, that was crazy. But then I sorry, just to finish my point, I yeah. thought that they like ran cocaine bear into the ground. Yeah, they really with, like, with uh, they, Malala and Yeah. That whole like, shit. Like leave Malala also Malala's 15 minutes should be up. What? 20, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> that bitch was blown up, bro. And then also leave her alone. Bro, if you got blown up, I would be like, let's get Jimmy on the Oscars. They as shouldn't many times have as he wants. They shouldn't have um Cocaine Bear interact with Malala. They should have had Cocaine Bear interact with Colin Farrell. Yeah, true. A real Schniffsman. cocaine otter. <laughs> yeah, dude. A real Sniffsman. Yeah. Yeah, he's, that was, it, I, I thought he stood no chance of winning, but it was dope to see him. I mean, yo, he's one of the best to ever do it, dude. Yeah, and he was having fun. Yeah. I'm trying to think what other snubs. Yeah, it really, the, the, the director thing, it's like, I don't want to see the Daniels again. And you know the way the, the Oscars work. It's like, okay, if we're going to give best, best picture to A, Maybe we'll throw best director to B, and then we'll give best original or adapted screenplay to C. Right? Like Tarantino wins his screenplay awards, right. you know. And I thought it could have could have mixed it up a bit. Um, the fact that everything, everywhere, all at once crushed so hard really made it seem like the Academy doing fan service, not the fan service that like maybe guys like you and I would want on some dudes rock shit with Top Gun Maverick, which like is gonna win what like one technical, they won sound design or whatever, but like. Everywhere All at Once really is like the People's Champ movie, and I thought it was good, and I stand by the fact that like I wasn't like blown away. I probably will eventually watch it again, but I just don't know if it's the best movie of the past 95 years if we use the Oscars as the rubric. Well, That's my point. And now... You can't compare it across Oscars. You have to compare it to its current, current competition. Yeah, and again, not the best the of the other year. like six or seven movies. Also, now, not to be a glass half empty guy, I feel like it will now be cursed forever to be overrated because of this once-in-a-lifetime showing at Hollywood's biggest night. Yeah. 
it's going to be tough for them to kind of like well, that's, overcome that's, the overrated allegations now that they have every Oscar well, in that's every on, major category. But that's on you if you walk into it as a viewer that's like, oh, it won this, it won that. Like, oh, it better but be fucking like this. don't the Oscars validate the importance of these No, not necessarily. Films? I was okay. looking back at like other, some other Best Picture winners. Oh, like, Man, dude. Some, there's some fucking stinkers. In Crash. There. Yeah. Fucking uh, Green Book. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some real. I mean, we could go through and there's a ton of stinkers. La La Land. Oh, that didn't win. Moonlight won. Moonlight, honestly, great movie. Moonlight was Moonlight great. Moonlight, and honestly, I'm a classic man. <laughs> classic man. It can't we, be the outro we music. We have used that outro <laughs> music <laughs> many. The chopped and screwed classic man is so. I know. Honestly, Jonathan Mayers is low key on his Jindaya shit. Yeah. Jindaya? What's his name? Zendaya? Jindaya? Jindena? Jindena. Um, anyway. Let's get into a time this past week where you and I were in front of the camera ourselves. Oh, yeah. Making a little motherfucking movie. Uh, we had a little photo shoot, no mm-hmm. big deal. Um, easy breezy, in and out. We're fucking pros. We didn't been doing shit for how, I don't know how long. <laughs> um, but the lead up to it, there was some drama. There was some s- high stakes. There yeah. was some, not beef, but like some ah. some tension. Not to make it like an arguing pod, because I think the vibes have been stellar lately, and I think the people at home would agree. This is the maddest, the most angry that you have been at me, I feel like, in a long time. Yeah, for sure. Um, which, which to me, does it felt not war- unwarranted. Not we, we don't have to get into it necessarily, but I was like, damn, maybe I need to learn like other anger management techniques or like start taking boxing lessons. Seriously. Um, Besides being the fucking um, best passive aggressive performance of the year. Huh? That's you. Like, that's your Oscar. You're oh, the, you, you are the best at being passive aggressive. No, I wasn't being passive aggressive. I was being mm-hmm. aggressive aggressive. I was like, yo, <laughs> you fucking suck. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I replied to the email, what is wrong with you? Okay. So <laughs> yes, what happened was, but that was just to me. You didn't respond to everyone. You, you oh, of course not. I'm okay. a professional emailer. Why, I wouldn't CC someone else when I ask you, what, what the, the fuck, fuck is, is wrong, wrong with, with you? you, bro? Yeah. I think you actually used the F word. No, I just said, what is wrong with you? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. What happened was, real quick, they were like, hey, we're a small independent store that is traveling to New York. Uh, Okay. Uh, All right. Sorry. Look, right? I'll let you cook. Let him cook. Let him okay. Cook. They didn't say that. We are trapped. We, well, I guess you didn't know. We didn't know if they were traveling to New York. No, of course they were. What, did, what am I talking about? They're like, hey, we are this store that we know, and we've been there. You don't want to just say because it's on. All right, it was, it was no tray. Yeah, no tray was in like, Chicago. We're, like, we're gonna come to New York and shoot you guys and they're for like, a friends uh, feature. They're like three to four looks. You can bring your own clothes, but like, um, please make some selects from like the new arrival section from Spring Twenty Three, and for enough for three to four looks. Yeah. So I was like, all right, bet. Here's uh, four outerwear options, four tops, and like two or three pairs of pants and like two or three pairs of shoes. Yeah. And I was like, and some sunglasses. It was a total of 18 selects. Oh, really? We're keep, you kept score on your, because I don't even, I waited until the last minute to do the same to provide um, my selects, at which point you believe I might have gone a tad overboard. Well, it's also just like the, the, the way that we re- it was received. I acknowledged was... it when I sent through my... 51 selects. I said, hey, guys, I know this is a bit much, but any any um, s- smattering selection of this master list is fine with me. So I almost was like I did too good of a job. I mm. think. The look that must have crossed the uh, production, the producer's face when she saw that she was going to take 69 pieces of clothing to New York. Yeah. Which I, they didn't do anyway. But you didn't even... I guess that's where I'll like hand up. That's on me. I I thought that it would be shipped in, not necessarily like checked in or carried on, because like the I, cost of overnighting sixty nine pieces of clothing. Uh, and look, there I was, think, there I, was overreacted. I overreacted. I overreacted. All right, I overreacted. It was a lot of things all at once. It was everything. They were all at once. once. Yeah, yeah. Um, where it was just a lot of shit. Where I was just like, I felt it was unfair to them. It was unfair to me. Yeah. You were like, I'm the talent. Get off my dick. Um, and I was like, I, oh. I did. Well, you. Listen, I wouldn't. I'm never the guy that's gonna hit someone with a sincere uh, "get off my dick," but I, I had to. I had to counteract you, dude. I had to. I had to fight back. I, had to I fight said. Back. I said. I asked for 18. You asked for 51. You go get off my dick. <laughs> this was after you sent me that rude email, or and the fact. No that, effort. Again, no effort. I. Uh, I thought that I did a fairly decent job of like setting up that I might have been being a bit of a monster, a bit of a diva with, with no tray. Ultimately, no. I did not consider how those items were going to make it to New York. And because or like having someone steam 51 items ahead of time. And, and again, I didn't expect them to bring all that stuff because it, it was kind of between seasons, so there was like stuff selling out or stuff in limited sizes. Um, and, uh, you know, there was budget, so I thought like, yeah, I didn't know. 
I guess I didn't consider that it was going to be a more of like a lo-fi down home, you know, style shoot versus like some big production. So I was like, I was like, all right, if uh, to to rectify me being like at a disadvantage when it comes to like having eighteen pieces to select from versus like fifty one pieces to select from, I was like, oh, let me get one of everything. Yeah. That Lawrence requested, but just in my sizing as well. Also, uh, I felt like a weird. I was like, is he serious? Because that's also like a bizarre ask. But I guess like you well, felt that you were painted into a corner. Yeah, and I think like if it's it's, I felt that it was unfair to the notary people that have to like remove so much clothing from their like yeah, small guess. independent store that is no longer for sale that day, or they can't fulfill that order. It's unfair to like the production team that has to like yeah. transport that across the country, steam it, uh, a quarter of it gets used, pack it back up, ship it back home, or yeah. fly with it back home. Um, and it was unfair to me where I'm just like, okay, so I have this much to play with, and you have fucking this much yeah. to play with. Um, Ultimately, though, it didn't matter. That's the funniest. Well, what's thing funny? Too. So, so I was like, "Yo, <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to request just as much. Let me get one of everything." Which, like, I think hilarious, but also dickhead move on my part. Sure, uh, we were both dickheads in this situation. I guess so. I you, would agree. You, you, had, you, had, you had some dickhead sentiment where you're like, "I'm the talent." Well, and that I'm, was I'm talent. I can I can do this. I'm a talent. Okay. Like, don't be a dick. That, that was me. Like that was the, me going. That's a nuclear option where I'm like, "Yo, at the end <laughs> of the day, you and I are talent." So it's like talent trumps all. But it is. <sighs> you can also you Trump can be all. talent. And gracious and fucking polite, and not that it was rude, or it wasn't. It wasn't explicitly rude. It was you thought there was rude undertones. Though I think the only people that thought that were like me. And, me and you were the only ones actually who had a problem with this. No trade seemingly didn't even really well, care. Okay, so what, <laughs> so the poetic outcome and what was really funny and ultimately like everything's all good. We talked it out. Yeah. Everything's all good. <laughs> but what was really funny and like the the shoot itself was like the easiest like breeziest shoot it's we've so ever chill, done. The greatest, we were like dude. they were like yo we're so ahead of schedule like uh, yeah. you guys can like. Go, I guess. Yeah, like, we just wrapped a whole like hour and a half early. But the production person was like, "Oh, uh, like, oh, you guys requested a hundred and two pieces. You know what? Um, what <laughs> the style is just gonna work it out. Yeah, yeah. Just and then so we're going yeah. into the fucking photo shoot blind. <laughs> You're like, yo, what? Do, what are you bringing? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Probably nothing. Yeah. I had to reach out to the stylist or to the production person and be like, yo, can this, like, what did the stylist decide? She sends us the looks. The mood board. Luckily, yeah. she did. See, we saw the mood board and, like, the, the f- each fit mm-hmm. um, kind of, like, pieced out. Because two of the pieces were from a brand that I was like, there is no fucking way I'm wearing this. That was my thing where I was like, why even ask us? And it's fine because, like, obviously, there's we're styling ourselves, but we have the stylist who's, like, making the selects. It's like, I don't even remember selecting, like, half that shit. So it's like, what was the. We could have like no. I think I think a lot of it was in your. Well, I mean, you asked for the entire store. So <laughs> I like, lost track. Chances are, yeah. There was a couple things, but yeah, that one. I mean, it was funny to to you be like, I am not wearing brand X. Yeah. So you I'm could use your imagination at home. Yeah, it's a brand that uh, maybe you were laughing at them, maybe you're laughing with them. Recently, who's, who's to say? At a presentation in Paris <laughs> and or New York. Did that ever happen? The one in New York? I don't think so. Really? Wait, did it? Oh, I don't know. I actually don't know. Whatever. Um, yeah, it was poetic that like, y- y- like you give a mouse a cookie situation and then you had to walk in like blind, not knowing what you're getting. But yeah. luckily the fits were fire. Um, the vibes are strong. The vibes are good all day. Yeah. Uh, it's a good mix of like actual wearable fits and then like some editorialized pieces well, where like they're very, well, one of the, one of my looks is so turbo and I'm I had curious to, to see what people I said. had to talk you into this well, and like I, I was genuinely encouraging you to go for it. Yeah. Because it is a pair of pants that is as wide as this fucking TV. Like, each yeah. pant like, is, like, 45 inches wide. Dr- Dries Van Noten, like, rave pants. Rave like, cargo, cargo pants. pants. Yeah, they're crazy. And you were like, this looks so, so fucking stupid. But then you were kind of out of options with, like, the stuff that you <laughs> I really brought. didn't have and, options. Like, I think you tried a few other pieces. But it was just like, yo, you got to go. Yeah. It was a Stone Island camo puffa. Which I did pick. I like that. That's that's hard. Um, the Dustin Lewis special. Yeah. And then these gigantic rave pants. Yeah. And then big old your... Margella boots, too. Oh, that's right. Look. It's, it is a weird, like, Mandem, Balenciaga, Manchester look that, again, hey, we're just having fun with the people. It's but editorial. I, but, but, okay, so I was talking, I was like, yo, it's editorial. Like, you got to go yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, this isn't just, like, dressing around the way. This isn't, yeah. you know, bottega to the bodega. You got to go fucking extra hard and, like, snap. This is when you go for it, right? Yeah, full And when up. it is, like, editorial, it's not red carpet. It's not, like, yeah. you just fucking looking hard. Like, people... Like you gotta really. This is the only opportunity you have where you're ever gonna wear these gigantic yeah. pantalones. And we'll we'll see what the people's reaction is. I thought for the most part, it was. A, I think it's a good mix of like actual aspirational dressing. Like my biggest takeaway was it was the first time I had ever not been hands on with, but ever actually was like wearing a piece from the row. Oh, the and I'm like fully Olsen pilled. Like I get it, and I and I did the photo shoot stolen valor on my story, which was hilarious to 
people to be again talking about like people fucking with me on IG, uh, which I guess is like another theme of this week. But people be like, "Oh, the podcast money be hitting for real, for real, eh, Larry?" And I'm like, "No, it's just the from fact a photo that shoot." <laughs> so, I mean, look, I'm guilty of that. It was sick, dude. I'm guilty of that. Although I will say this: when I posted um, a stolen valor fit pick at Mohawk General Store, I ended up acquiring both those pieces. So. Both the Drees, I don't know if I can sequin pants, the road, dude. and the Orly mohair polo. With my new Ramoa budget, I don't have enough money left over for the road, dude. You didn't buy that, the Ramoa. Jenna bought it for you. I, yeah, with my own money, dude. But he, she's out, she's a strong yeah, white woman fair. making her own I money. Mean, who knows where? About? Yeah, who knows where it came from? Either way, <laughs> uh, the row jacket, fucking honestly, I I I get it. Is I row it. now like Orly for me? Like that's like my like your top tier aspirational. aspirational yeah. Like I wish I could have more of that. Mm-hmm. Is row is the row now that for you? Although like I, pr- I think so. I mean, Orly is also. I mean, I we agree on a lot of like that upper echelon stuff because we're not capital F fashion guys. So there's few brands in that tier price wise that we actually gravitate to uh, gravitate towards. Excuse me, but yeah, no, the row for me is. I, I was really. I was like, f- I want to like walk out. What's so good about it? it? Just felt nice. It felt amazing. The cut was like oversized, but like perfect. It kind of reminds me of like our overshirt, where it's like you nail it. Like you really go through the R and D to get that oversized fit, yes. so that's not you like you and I are operating on the same brain frequency as, as the Olsen, Olsen twins, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, um, yeah, we're our own type of twins, I guess. Um, couldn't think of it. Was so of good that you fucking violated a, yeah. a you yeah. did a stolen valor. I had to. It was too. Well, I, I, and on the fucking Cessna chair, I was like, come on, bro, we got to fuck Cheska. Cheska, fuck. Cessna's, Cessna's a, a plane. plane. <laughs> Top Gun Maverick. So I'm just exposing myself as a fucking moron. Well, everyone already knew that. Um, <laughs> Cheska chair. Um, okay, so yeah. you met some new people in Texas that maybe they didn't learn oh, aware yeah. that you were a moron, but you definitely proved it to them. Like what? So you spent a weekend in Texas. Yeah. You mentioned that you're at your half brother in law's fiftieth birthday party. Yeah, but you had a nice little. My half brother. He's my brother in law. He's Jenna's half brother. But but he was they were raised together so like for all intents and purposes. It's her okay, your brother. But he has a different last name, which will play into this story. So. Just real quick, a couple things. I want to touch back on the advanced Reggie dressing thing where it's like, yeah, just real quick, where it's like I'm going to this birthday party and like working through Jenna and I'm seeing a lot of family from like her mom's side of the family who who I don't see a lot. And it's like, you know, you really want to like play it fucking conservative. It doesn't matter ultimately like what a guy like you and I would wear because it's like let's go Brandon hats and hey dude sneakers, which are so funny to me because these Hey Dude sneakers, now I've been seeing them so much, and, and it needs to be mentioned because it's like the kind of shoe... First of all, what did you compare them to? They're like uh, the, like the a, poor uh, man's the poor Lord man's Piana, Piana Piana Summer stepper. Walk. Yeah, Summer Walker. <laughs> the, the Summer Walker? Summer Walk. It's okay. called the Summer <laughs> not Walk. Like the, no, not, not the, the rapper. No, or singer, whatever. Uh, the Open Walks and the Summer Walks. It's so funny that they're like the, the everyman's... Um, because I don't want to be classist, but like the every man uh, summer walk. But well, by saying you don't want to be classist, I think that. Uh, but then, uh, but then they're also like in the promo shots of the whale with Brendan Fraser and his like fat cankle steppers. They're basically like these hey dude sneakers. It's the most popular shoe of the every man in Texas, yeah. and I would assume most parts of Middle America. Which is so funny because like you, I'm never going to be able to be that guy because that to me is that's a well. If you're if you're if you weren't it's a line there, too far. If there's no cap in your rap when it came to your fetishization of like Western wear and yeah. like dudes in Texas, like. Mm-hmm. You should start wearing these hey dude shoes. Dude, I can't. Instead do of the it. fucking big western buckle, instead of the road the rope rodeo hat, instead yeah. of the fucking big old cowboy boots, you should be wearing some let's go Brandon hats, <laughs> some yeah. fucking Trump 24 shit, and some hey dude kicks. Yeah, just worn completely unironically. Yeah. Um I don't think I could ever be that guy. That's that's a trying that's would be trying too hard to assimilate. That would be me betraying my So what uh what like how dialed down did you get to the point where like were people still calling you the like homophobic slurs or like <laughs> no 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 and shout out fucking Jenna's family they're all, they're all good people um no but uh, it was I'm happy that I kind of like did break out the Belgians and like the good 501s because of all the gin joints in all the world this was crazy I met a patron at the party fucking blew my mind I think because of Jenna's brother having a different last name despite the fact that they were raised together there's no way that this dude shout out fucking Steven and his beautiful girlfriend Sophia um Sophia is the niece of by for all intents and purposes my sister-in-law and we and they live in houston and they had never necessarily come to bay city and they probably had never met jenna's uh brother before definitely never met me this guy from across the party is like what the fuck it's larry like this is a patron and it was awesome meeting him because he got a nice dig in when he came over and introduced himself and it was funny because they hadn't mentioned 
he had mentioned that he like knew me to the birthday boy and girl, but no one had prepped me for this. So he just, I was, I was coming in fucking cold and he was like, yo, nice Lone Star. I paid for that. And I was like, oh shit, this guy, yeah, he's a fucking patriot. Is he in the cord? So he got, I don't know if he's in the cord, but shout out fucking Steve, AKA Spider Steve. Spider um, Steve. Why does he go by Spider Steve? I don't want to dox him. That's his IG. I guess oh. I did. <laughs> oh. There's a little, there's more, uh, and I'm, and I know he's listening now. So shout out Steve. But it was great, man. I talked to them uh, a bunch to the point where we were having such a good time that Jen was like, yo, get your ass inside. You're missing all of my karaoke jams. I need mm. you there to be, talk about fucking stage mom, Instagram husband. I got to get the content. You do get her. carried away when uh, yeah. you find a fan of yours. I'll yeah. say that. So of all the gin joints in yeah. all the world, fucking crazy. And I think uh, Steve and Sophia were just as surprised. No, it sounded um, like your star of the show. Like you're, well, like you're not really. Well, the brother-in-law or your the half. The, what? He's, my, brother, bro- he's brother-in-law. my brother-in-law. He was like telling your friends that like you're sick because oh. you're good at drunk driving? No, no, no. So then the funniest thing was I'm meeting um, a lot of my brother-in-law's boys and fellas for the first time. I had met some you know, throughout the years. But uh, this uh, being the 50th birthday party, everyone fucking came out. And throughout the night, he basically introduced me like on three separate occasions to different groups of people and as like everyone got like progress- progressively drunker like the story changed a bit where like at first it was like let me tell you the story about when i knew that my brother-in-law was really my brother and then it was like <laughs> let me tell you the story about when i knew i loved my brother over here and it was just like getting pro- but the story is basically this we had a, a, a myself jenna my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law we had a day um on the golf course okay blasting darts Sipping beers, not keeping score, having a great time. And uh, uh, we left in two separate cars to go. I think we were going out to maybe do karaoke at the local biker bar after the fact. We were keeping the party going. At a certain point on the drive home, he pulls over the truck on the side of the road. And I start getting nervous. I'm like, yo, is everything okay with the car? Like, what's going on? We got fucking karaoke to get to. And he's like, nah, dude. He's like, I'm just pulling over because we're at a cold one. Then he pops in the back to get out the, <laughs> to go to the cooler and get some cor- to get some silver bolts for the boys. And he said that uh, my reaction was all time because uh, I just said, hell yeah, Texas rocks. And he was like, that's when I knew you were the fucking man, dude. Texas forever. Um, yeah, so Texas forever. So, yeah, just uh, a great example of maybe, maybe the true genesis of Lone Star Larry, though, by the way, that story that happened like fairly recently. So I was like, wait, before that, you didn't think I was, right? like, <laughs> you know, but uh, it's like, no, I thought you were. Uh, and then we had to. Not I was say like, that word. my brother in law, pretty close. We had some like deep conversations more than just like, hell yeah, dude. Um, drinking and driving responsibly, <laughs> you know, like we've had deeper convos. But that was when he was like that really hammered home. So it was, it was hilarious to hear him relay that story to his boys and then also refer to me as a celebrity, which is extremely embarrassing. Damn. Yeah. That's which, really embarrassing. Uh, yeah. And then people being like, like, why? What is he doing? And then like trying to, you know, get into that while oh. while busting down camel crushes and slamming Lone Stars is not like recommended. I do think, and this is like obviously a problem that you and I and maybe like a few other people in the world um, can relate to is that explaining the ins and outs, not even the ins and outs, but like the general broad strokes of like a fashion podcast. No, just what you do for a living. Well, but uh, on the most but base you're like, level. But you're like, oh, I, I have a podcast. Oh, it's about, and like we have to say it's about fashion. Yeah. And then like, what, like, oh, like what's that? And I say, interview, that. I say interview show. I if I'm that, even going that far into I had to do that at Bernie's to some friends of friends. And I was just like, I fucking like, at this point, I yeah. need to, I need to do a better job. I need to come up with like a script in my head where it's just like it's this, that, and this, and then it's so it's so bulletproof and so like close ended that there can be zero follow up questions. Yeah, I mean that, and it was in a thing where people like one guy, one of his boys was like, "Yo, yeah, what's your Instagram? Let me let me follow." I'm like, I, I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, it's. Ah, he's gassing me up, whatever. But anyway, shout out to fucking my brother-in-law. Shout out to fucking Texas. Shout out to Steven. Shout out to fucking Sophia. What a what a fucking what a time to be alive, dude. I honestly was feeling the love. Yeah. It was great. That's so great. that was so that was my trip in a nutshell. Besides then, like, you know, Lone Stars and What a Burger and fucking Barbecue and all the shit I normally do, which is why I feel like absolute dog shit today landing at fucking one AM and then lugging that Ramoa all over fucking LaGuardia. Well, look, the perils of microfame are real. <laughs> um, whether it's being embarrassed by having to spell out sartorial ink yeah. to your fucking... Which we had to do at the photo shoot, too. Hey, every- dude-ass wearing cousin. At the f- oh, Another thing, which is funny you say that, because you always make fun of my IG handle. At the shoot, because it was so fun and we had like our little family for two and a half hours and everyone wants to fucking follow each other, people being like, oh, what's your IG handle? And I have to do it. I'm like, it's like, just give me your phone. 
Like, just mm. I'm not gonna say it out loud. I'm not gonna explain. It. Like, I just gotta type it in. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a kind of a micro a micro aggression <laughs> micro trigger for the perils of yeah, just like sartorial having sixty thousand thirty thousand yeah. followers, whatever. Which is fire. Just go Doctor Taco spelled out. Like that's hard. Like even if your name is by design dumb, it is kind of tight that you're just like Doctor Taco because it's just it's so obviously stupid versus mine, which is just cumbersome and esoteric and. And stupid you definitely thought it was cool when you like made it. Yeah, dude. Well, it was the name of my fucking dot blog, blog spot. spot back when I was being like, "Yo, check out this bad boy." <laughs> let me, yo, let me cop one of them bad. I swear to God, if you go back and read that shit, I have used, yo, I, I, I got hands on with one of these bad boys, and let me tell you, I dude. did go through your, uh, I went through every single page of your blog spot recently. Why? Remember this? Because you're. I was trying to make a meme. Get off my dick, Jimbo. Relax, buddy. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? No, I was trying to make a meme where it's At like guys, expense. guys stopped having sex <laughs> oh, in yeah, like 2009. Yeah, yeah. Like that's when like the straight men in America having sex yeah, like started yeah, yeah. declining and I was I was like wait a second this absolutely lines up with sartorially <laughs> blogspot.com unfortunately you started your shit a few years later Ooh, thank god dude so I guess like when you stopped having sex yeah. when you stopped was when you launched the blog my blog is what turned Bosler and gay dude but he has a wife wait is he really not gay he has a wife I'm not saying he's not gay. Oh, he's married. I thought he was woman. actually an out of the closet gay man based on his his <laughs> oeuvre. <laughs> yeah, based on his hair. Um, <laughs> no, he is he has a wife. But anyway, I was trying to segue anyway. for the longest time about talking about the micro uh, triggers and aggressions of this micro fame. Where not only is it like having to spell out your fucking Instagram because like everyone in your family wants to follow you, <laughs> but also back in my uh, horn dog days. Oh, dude, this is so good. When dating, when dating, like there's. I don't know. Like, there's certain ways to describe me and the things I do where, like, it's pretty clear that it's me and the things I do. Can I just set so up this story th- real quick? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Drake is coming to town. We're trying to get tickets. And uh, we were thinking about the last time Drake was on tour, you had maybe, like, the worst date of all time. The worst wor- first date. I worked at Def Jam, and I was like, yo, um, yeah. and Drake is on Republic, which is part of Universal. So I hit up the, there's, like, an employee ticket Young pool. Young Moolah, baby. There's an employee ticket pool, and I somehow, I don't know why these were afforded to me. I guess this is when I was still, like, a VP. I mean, I was a VP, and people still, like, respected me, my team, and, like, didn't understand, like, still thought that we were going to, like, change Def Jam. You and your team, Young Really money. turn this around. <laughs> the memes Yeah right um, gonna, <laughs> Which is what we just do now At TF We're gonna yeah. finally fucking Get in the, We're gonna sign the next Bieber Right um, They were like Oh here's two Drake tickets And I was like What the fuck mm. uh, This so was 2018 2018 I forget when exactly In New York When did Yes Indeed come out Anyway continue what? Sorry No Yes Indeed Because I think of the Flying Ferrari Which was mm. like the Yes Indeed Well he played He played his whole fucking Right 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 So Two tickets Pretty fucking good seats, like center. And this right. is when the, the yeah twenty eighteen. This is when the giant stage was like, um, it was like the giant swimming pool mm-hmm. with Migos oh, the, opening and the phone screen and like it was yeah, yeah that was with awesome. the with the half with the basketball court. So sick. Migos opening and the Power Ranger shit, um, the flying Ferrari, like you said. And so I was like, all right, let me just invite like whatever Raya girl I'm talking to now, <laughs> um, because like who's gonna words. say no to right. just like fire like it's free, flex. T- it's free flex. tickets to Drake show and yeah. it was like lower two hundred bowl maybe upper one hundred. Center court, I guess you could say, because um, it was like a fucking rectangle. That took up, like, Feet on pixels. All of MSG. <laughs> and yeah, so she and I had a fun time. It was the first time I'd ever seen anyone use Apple Pay. <laughs> I think about a third of the way through, I was like, all right, like this isn't anything more than just like, th- like there's not going to be a second date. This is like, this we're just having it. fun. We're just having fun. Drake shows fire. She's like on her phone too much, whatever. <laughs> um, Bam. So I was like, all right, let me see what the fucking fellows are up to. I end up going to meet up with, and she comes with me. Yeah, I know. I, oh, I know. She, well, we like leave MSG, and she's like, we're like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, oh, my friends are at, I think, Goldie's in Greenpoint. It was, uh, should we say who it was? Yeah, of course. It was Chuck and Waz. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Waz I was like, dope. do you want to go? It was like a Thursday night, I think. I was like, do you want to go like you mean, Link up out? with the fellows, yeah. And look, she said, yeah, <laughs> right? So meet up, link up, kind of like. She ends up like I'm, we're not even like really talking at this right. point. The night got away from y'all. Not even that. It was just like she was like we weren't trying to like we understood that this was like a one and done situation. Totally fine. Happens all the time. Obviously, um, charge to the game. But then, was it the next day or two days later? Yeah, that might have been like let's say that's a Saturday night. I mean, I don't know. It was like a Thursday night. But I, I remember, um, and this is where the story gets incredible because the best blind item of all time was about to drop. We I remember because we were leaving. The Barstool office after recording a podcast, I believe. The new one? The new office? Yeah, yeah, yeah the right? new yeah. one. Well, yeah, yeah, the new one. Yeah. It was, and this was at the end of our run. This is basically like, you know, the no, last. 
2018. We had two more years to go. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. For real. <laughs> we are well. I you know we had at least another full our year. Our sentence hadn't been com- hadn't been commuted yet. Yeah. <laughs> and you get your you get a little ding on your phone and you're like oh shit oh shit and I'm like what and <laughs> some dude had sent a screenshot. I of, fo- or, or forwarded me an Instagram story. I don't think that was a thing yet. I think oh, he took really? a screenshot and oh, and, and DM'd stories. it to you. Probably not. And it was uh, this girl's IG story. <laughs> it was all. It was before even create mode because she had like scribbled out the entire yeah. background right. and then typed out a few sentences. Yeah. Where it was like, I mean, oh God, do you have it still? No way. And I wish I did. And when I was telling this story to Gallagher the other day, he was like, "Tell me you still have it." But Fuck. to paraphrase, it was basically like, um. I don't recommend going on a date with a thirty, a mid thirty year old podcaster. Which I wasn't even in my mid thirties. Oh, who, I guess who's gonna who's gonna drag you along to hang out with his teenage friends and talk about how he knows Jonah Hill all night? Which <laughs> she's right. <laughs> That absolutely all happened. Just straight talk about this is this is finally we can get to it. Talk about getting dragged. Oh my god, dude. But like all factual. Like a hundred percent. Okay. Uh, <laughs> first of all, um, shout out this person. I still see her like at events and shit. We don't acknowledge each other. Um, <laughs> yeah, she hates you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you ruined her night. But she got she, also free concert out of it. So it's like, damn, that's a little harsh treatment for well, it was bro. a blind item. She didn't at you or anything, though. And again, the whole thing was like, someone sent it to me was like that. that I believe it was. Tell me this is about James, and I yeah. immediately was like, "Oh shit!" And I remember just being like, "Yo, yo, yo, you got to see this," and you being like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, dude. She read you like a goddamn book. It was pre me too. It was pre me, pre me. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't think she was trying to me to you, but you were. It was definitely well, fuck yeah, boy, shitty man. Type deal. But I was like, yo, we went to a Drake. I mean, whatever. I'm not going to explain myself. <laughs> but it was like, hey, maybe mention the fucking $500 uh, uh, sale price of the ticket that you got for free. Damn. That I got for free, too. I didn't pay $500. <laughs> I didn't pay $1,000 to go see Drake with some stranger. Um, and it was like, yeah, like everyone was along yeah. for the ride until all of a sudden we weren't. And was there too much Jonah Hill talk? That would have been, been like peak... That's like, that was the brand, right? I mean, not Well, I think it was, like... Talking we, about fucking dick riders. I think that we had just come off... Probably. The, mid thir- the mid-90s pod with Jonah. Pod and Hank, Or is yeah. coming up or something. And yeah. obviously, when I'm with the fellas, <laughs> that's what they want to talk about. <laughs> the, the, and I love how she thought they were, like, teenagers. <laughs> I know. And look, who am I but... Just also a young, generous, too, if I remember. So no, that's a little weird. No. No? no. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no, I don't mean... No. <laughs> who am I but, like, look... If that's what the fellas want, that's what Jimmy's going to get. If the fellas <laughs> want to talk Jonah Hill. It's giving fellas. I'm going to talk <laughs> Jonah Hill. I'm a, fuck, I'm a giver. And honestly, she should have seen that I was just generous with my time. <laughs> Maybe that's indication that I'm a generous yeah. lover. I'm a giver. <laughs> um, she'll never know. She'll never know. Yeah. It was funny that it was implying that you were just like, you're like, oh, let's go hang out with the homies so I can like just get gassed up about no, my it, famous well, friend or whatever. It was you know? more like, let's go hang out with the homies so that we don't have to continue what is like clearly just like a, a not like right. a, like like, a non let's, connection. Let's 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 release each other from this. The fact that she even like accompanied you to like the second spot after a concert that presumably ended pretty late is wild. So not that late. Um not here to like fucking you know victim shame or anything, but like I don't know <laughs> what she was expecting, bro. Um, uh, but, but yeah, yeah so <laughs> the best blind item of, of all time. I can only hope that when we hopefully do see Drake again, we can have another amazing story come out of it like this where you just get absolutely obliterated. I know. <laughs> Although, yeah, hopefully we see Drake. That's in July, bro. It's so far away. Well, we got it. Well, dude, I hope the plug comes only through. Four we need, away. dude. You know, I was. I mean, well, everyone I, knows how I feel. I I cannot wait. I really hope I we can go. Especially wait, can we I, can go. No, that we can go. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Fab five. Yeah. Um, Fingers crossed. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll keep you posted on whether or not we get Drake tickets <laughs> with twenty one. Yeah. Sure. Uh, we talked about getting rage tickets for like the two years <laughs> between the, between buying them and the show happening. So, oh, dude, and if it's any night like the rage night, then like, whoo, then, then content. You're about to see a ton of blind items because let me tell you, the boys were out of pocket. Yeah, <laughs> shut up, Stevie Wonder. All right, Chef, this has been another episode of the only podcast that matters. Sham, take us out. See you guys next week. Bye.